All right, we are just finishing up week eight, right? No, week nine. We're finishing up week nine, holy cow. We just got done with our group workout. Let's go ahead and jump on the scales and see how you guys did. After nine weeks in sixth place, down 10.7 pounds, 4.81%, our brand new mama who just had her little baby, Ms. Catherine. In fifth place, down 10.2 pounds, 4.87%, Deborah. In fourth place, down 6.6 .6 pounds, 5.6%, Susan. Third place, down 32 pounds. Like just saying that makes me go, wow, 32 pounds, nine weeks, 9.57%. Laura in second place, down 20.7 pounds, 9.78%. Donna and in first place, who was responsible for our workout tonight. <laughs> Everyone say thank you, Hannah. 20.2 uh, pounds, 13.46%. Miss Hannah. Congratulations, uh, new decades this week, even while traveling, even while being at a conference all weekend long, Miss Hannah busted into a new decade. She said hello to the 120s. Congratulations, Hannah. When is the last time you can remember being in the 120s? I have no memory of ever being this weight. I mean, I'm sure it was, I was at some point as a child, but for as long as I can remember, I've never been in the 120s. How did it feel this weekend to be at a conference, at a seminar, you know, not the schedule was not your own and to be in control, like to be in control, to not let your circumstances be in control, but for you to be in control. Yeah, it was, it was crazy a little bit because yeah, it was, it was crazy because anytime that I've traveled like that before, it's been eating out at every meal, a couple of drinks at the bar after it was over. And it would not be at all unusual for me to come home and have gained like six pounds over three days, but to come home and have actually lost was, I was really proud of it. What we are going to talk about tonight, this is probably something, not probably, this is something that all of us on this journey have already dealt with or will have to deal with at some point. It's not a matter of if, it is a matter of when. It really is a matter of when. And that unfortunately is negative people. Negative people. And it's so funny because sometimes people will be like, well, Carmen, nah. Like all my friends and family, they love me, they support me, they encourage me. This has nothing to do with who loves you and who doesn't love you. Because most people have opinions and they say crap, not based on whether they like you or whether they love you. It's based on their insecurities. That has not, most people, when they say negative stuff, most of the time, it has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with their insecurities being pressed on, which causes them to speak out and say stuff. And so I can remember when I started getting healthy and I really believed, I really believed that A, everyone would support me, that everyone would encourage me. I really believed that no one would try to food bully me. Like I, I was very upfront with the people that are around me, what I was doing and what my goals were. But I can still remember going to parties and going to places and 
people being like, oh, come on, you can have a cupcake. Like you, you've already lost how much, like, it's not a big deal. You can just have some pizza, just a slice. And I like, it shocked me how much people would try to get me to eat food. And it was just like, like you ever hear like sometimes they'll say no means no. I wanted to be like, listen, no means no. I've said no three times back off. Right. And so first it would start with the food bully and it would start with people trying to talk me into eating things that I had said no to. Then I can remember, and, and I always thought that maybe once I got small enough, someone might say something, but this happened way sooner than I thought it would. Uh, it was so funny. One of my best girlfriends who is the MC at our events, she kind of told the story this weekend, but she got her numbers off a little bit. So she said from stage this weekend, it's when I had lost 90 pounds. Okay. I hadn't lost 90 pounds. So we, this first happened when I was, me and my girlfriend and our families, we vacation every single year in Florida. And I, last I had seen her, I was at 288 pounds. We showed up in Florida and I, she hadn't asked about my weight loss. I hadn't volunteered it partially because she was 300 and some pounds. And what do you say to an overweight friend that, you know, is insecure about her weight and hasn't lost weight and you've lost weight. It's not like you're just like, Hey, guess what? I've lost weight. Like that's not something you just advertise to someone who has weight issues that doesn't ask. So she didn't ask. I didn't say anything. And it was what it was. So we show up in Florida. I was at 213 pounds. So I was not small, like five, four, 213 pounds is still not a small woman. And I show up and I get out of the car and like, she's like, Hey, she hugs me. We say hi, like no big deal. And then all of a sudden she disappears. I don't see her. She goes, checks into her condo. I go to my condo. I try to call her. She doesn't answer. I say, Hey, are we doing this? Are we doing that? Nope. I'm busy. Like she's just making reasons to not see me. Now we've been doing this vacation as families since our babies were in our bellies. And at this point we have several kids. And so I'm like, okay, what is going on? Why is she acting so standoffish? Why is she acting so weird? So that night I said, Hey, would you meet me down at the hot tub? And we go down to the hot tub and the first thing, and I had a bathing suit that was way too big on me because like it was December. I wasn't going to go buy a new bathing suit. I literally was passing by the size. I wasn't going to go buy a bathing suit for a two week vacation. Like, no, I don't care that it's falling off me. I'll get a new bathing suit next spring. I ain't wasting money on one. That's not, I'm not going to be in very long. So she sees me and she's like, what? Couldn't afford to buy a new bathing suit. Like it's literally falling off of you. I will buy you a bathing suit. Like this is ridiculous. And I'm like, no, I said, I don't need to buy a bathing suit. I said, literally, I'm only wearing this for this vacation. Within a month, it's like anything I buy is not going to fit me because I'm not done losing weight. So I'm not going to waste the money. I'm going to saving that money until I get to my goal. And then it, I said, so what's going on? Where have you been? Like, what's how? And she's like, I cannot believe you've lost all this weight and you haven't told me. I said, okay, well, so I explained why I hadn't told her. And she's like, well, now you're saying you have more weight to lose. I'm like, yeah. She's like, how much? Like, you're so skinny. I can't imagine you losing any more. Now I'm at 213 pounds. That is not a small woman. So she proceeds to go on and on and on. Then she says, are you only losing weight so that you can go sell these products? I said, no, I have no intention of ever selling these products. I had to go back several years later and be like, well, God convicted me and now I am. But anyway, this, like, she literally sat there and she was like, well, I don't know where you have any more weight to lose. Like, you're going to look sickly. Like, you're going to look like one of those people that's just not healthy if you keep losing this weight. And I just had to love her where she was at. And I had to let her be mad about what she was mad about, but not take on her stuff. And I would love to say that that was the only time that happened. That was the first time it happened. But what I can tell you is on the road to losing weight, on the road to getting to my goal, every single person in my life had something negative to say, including my own mother. Now, my own mother was morbidly obese at the time, 200 and some pounds, and she didn't say anything ugly, but it was like, so when do you think it's enough? Like, don't you think you've gone far enough? Like, I don't know where you're going to lose any more weight from. Now, I'm looking at the scale. I'm watching my body fat percentage. 
I know that I'm not unhealthy because someone who's sickly and unhealthy, like I also saw myself naked. <laughs> so I knew where all the extra fluff was. Like I knew where I could lose. And again, the body fat percentage doesn't lie, but our feelings often do. The facts don't lie, but our feelings often do. And so, but I got to tell you, like I would see people, like I remember even being at 180 pounds and seeing a woman I hadn't seen in a while. And she was just like, like people that I didn't even know would stop me and be like, you look amazing. Please tell me you're stopping. Like, please tell me you're not going to go anymore. Like you look beautiful. You look healthy. You look so good. Like you don't need to lose any more weight. You're going to look sickly or you're going to look like a cancer patient. Like these are the things people would say. And it just got away with me. Like I could not, like I would just go, I would leave conversations and just be like, what in the world? Because if I'm being honest with you, I really thought that as a wife and at the time, a mother of two, that when I decided to get healthy, everyone would be happy for me. That wasn't the case. And it didn't, my husband was the only one that never said anything negative. And I can remember going to him at about 140 pounds, 150 pounds. And I said, babe, do I look unhealthy? Like, here's what the scale says. I'm currently in a size six. I'm not at my body fat percentage goal. Like, I don't think I'm done. Like, I, I'm i not at my goal yet. And I didn't come this far to only come this far. Like, I want to get to my goal. I don't want to stop short like all the other times before. And he said, no. And I, he, I said, well, would you do me a favor? If you ever see me doing anything unhealthy, would you please tell me? And he said, yes. He said, you ignore all of them and you keep going. I said, okay. And I did. And I'm not going to tell you that every moment was easy, but the part that ticked me off the most is where were all those people who had opinions as I was gaining, as I was getting fluffier and fluffier and fluffier. Do you think any of them came to me as I was shoving another cheeseburger in my mouth and said, Hey, Carmen, we're really concerned about you. You've got kids, you're pregnant, you have gestational diabetes, you're busting out of a size 22. Like, do you think you should slow down? Nobody cared to say anything as I was gaining weight. But all of a sudden I start losing weight and everybody was so concerned. And I just thought, this is freaking ridiculous. Because what was more unhealthy for me? My morbidly obeseness or my newfound fitness? Like clearly the morbidly obese part was super unhealthy, but no one said a word. And so people are going to have opinions. People are going to ask you when you're done. People are going to, uh, no, most people aren't going to be ugly, but some will. Uh, we've had several people in several cast members from previous seasons. They've had people say things like, uh, well, you just don't look healthy or do you have cancer? Are you sick? Or you look like you just went through chemo. We had somebody say to someone from a previous season, I don't know, you've lost too much weight. Your hair looks thin. Prior to that comment, the girl never even thought her hair looked thin. All of a sudden, she someone says something out of their insecurities. Why? Because if someone's insecure about their body and you're losing weight, it presses on their insecurities. For most of us, we have, haven't always been the fittest person in the room. So all of a sudden when you, like I, for the most of my life was the biggest person in the room. I was the most unhealthiest person in the room. So when that all of a sudden changes and you go from being the unhealthiest to the healthiest, it presses on people's insecurities. And so we've got to understand that. And here's what I will tell you. The worst thing we can do as we encounter these situations is defend ourselves. And this is what we typically want to do. When anyone ever attacks our decisions, when it's with our finances, our marriage, our parenting, our health, anything that we're doing, the our first knee-jerk reaction is to be like, yeah, but you don't understand. And then we want to defend ourselves. Whenever we defend ourselves, all it does is plant seeds of doubt in our own brain. That is all it does. Listen to me. You owe nobody an explanation. 
if you and your spouse, for those of us that are married, as long as you're on the same page, everybody else can fly a flipping kite. Did you hear me? Everybody else can go fly a kite. Their opinion is none of your business. Their opinion does not pay your bills. First and foremost, secondly, you should never take criticism from someone you wouldn't take advice from. Third of all, what I have found is that most people that are handing out these opinions never had the help I wanted. Never. Because most of the time, someone who is successful doesn't criticize someone for trying to get ahead. It's the people that aren't succeeding that criticize someone for going to a seminar, for growing, for stepping out and starting a business. It's the ones that aren't doing anything that criticize. It's never the successful people who are, have taken risks and started businesses. They're like, good for you. Go for it. Good job being at the conference. Good job growing. Good job reading a book. Good job stepping out on faith. It's never the ones that are healthy. Think about it. It's typically the ones that don't have the health you want that have the opinion. And if you listen to them, you will wind up where they're at. What is one thing that you are the most proud of that you've done in the last nine weeks? Like when you look back at your nine weeks, what's the one thing where you're like, wow, I am so proud of myself for this. Like, I am so proud of myself for this. Um, I would say the one thing I'm most proud of is um, staying consistent. And um, even when there's some days that are hard and uh, I didn't feel like working out, just being like, it's 30 minutes, I got to do it. And just uh, staying consistent. And uh, I feel like a big part of that is the Marco Polo and um, all like the little chats we have back and forth in there. That's awesome. Doesn't it feel so good when you're, when you are consistent, like it all of a sudden, it's like, it makes you feel almost like you have a superpower. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's so awesome. Good job, Laura. Been so proud of you. Like literally I looked at the sheet tonight and I was like 32 freaking pounds. Like that's crazy. Anyway, Miss Susan, you are next. I am probably most proud of the fact that um, I can go to an event and I don't have to have a drink because I've gone to several galas. This is gala session and gala season and and all of that. And I love having a glass of wine or, you know, just it, it's not like I have to have it all the time, but I enjoy it. And I'm very proud of myself for that um, and sticking to it. So, and then um, just like uh, Laura said, being so super consistent and I don't even like my days off. So, yeah, I, 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 I needed this. I very much, very much needed this. I think probably emotionally just as much if, as physically. That's awesome. That's awesome. Good job. Miss Donna. Hey, I mentioned this on the Marco Polo, but um, we got new t-shirts um, this weekend. And I argued and argued and argued with my daughter, probably five minutes, because I've been wearing an XL and they were loose. And she was at the t-shirt table with the large t-shirts. So I wanted a large t-shirt and she said, no, you're not getting a large t-shirt. Go to the medium t-shirt table. And I said, no, I have to wear it tomorrow. I need a large one. And she said, no, I'm not giving it to you. Just walk on down the hall. So I did go get a medium t-shirt. And of course I had to take off my flannel shirt because it was cold all weekend in Dallas and put it on. And it fit. I mean, it was a little tight, but it fit. And she kept saying, mom, in 20 more pounds, this medium is going to be too big for you. So I listened and stubbornly I uh, got that medium t-shirt and it fit. And it was so funny. I was talking to my mom tonight and um, um, 
I told her, I said, I got into a medium sized t-shirt this weekend. She says, no, you didn't. No, you didn't. I said, yes, I did. And Frank and I took pictures in the hotel room with our t-shirts on and I had my medium t-shirt on. So he sent it to her and she said, wow, you really did get into a medium t-shirt. And I said, yes, I did. So win-win. So that's my most proudest. Awesome. Nine weeks from an extra large to a medium, like, oh, so incredible. Good job, Thank you, Hannah. Thank you, Hannah. (laughs) Got to show some love. Yes. And good job, Donna, being, uh, you know, sometimes listening to your daughter, you know, tell you this because you don't want it to look tight. You don't want to walk in looking like you're a piece of sausage busting out of something. And even when I saw you, I was like, it looks so good. Like it didn't look too tight, like anything. Anyway, you looked so amazing this weekend. And oh, I can only imagine how that felt putting that on. And your mom's reaction is priceless. No, you didn't. No, you, she said, no, you didn't. I said, yes, I did. Here's a picture. <laughs> I got proof. Right. Uh, right. Awesome. Thank you. Hannah. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to double up. I have to steal Susan's as well, because it was very normal for me to have at least a glass of wine every night. Let's be honest too. And so to have gone this long and have not had anything is, is huge. But I, I think like combined what has been, what has made me really proud is I've traveled three times since we've started this program. So that's three times where I've packed every single bite of food that I've put in my mouth and taken it with me. And I even on those trips, we've even eaten out and I take my little lunchbox and here I go to the restaurant with my little lunchbox and Um, and I just eat at the restaurant and despite having, um, food pushers, you know, be like, you can get something at the restaurant or I'm cooking just, you can have one bite. And it's like, no, thank you. I'm eating according to my goals. I've got everything that I need. Uh, so I've been really proud of just staying on plan when I'm not at home. So awesome. Good job. Good job. Um, Miss Deborah. I have um two um moments that I was um oh wow, I did that. Um it was about a month ago. Um I met um my son. We had some paperwork to go over and he wanted me to meet him at this particular bar and grill that he frequents a lot. And um, so I met him there and um, all of his friends were, you know, buying rounds of shots and, and they were pushing me, you know, take shot, take shot, take shot, take shot before I would have done it without even thinking about it. And I was like, no, I'm sorry, that doesn't align with my goals. And of course, then there was a whole bunch of other questions about why does your goal not let you drink? And, but I didn't cave, I stood up. And then um, whenever I left, I was like, yeah, I st- I, I, I didn't cave. And I, I, I stood up for me and my goal of what I wanted to accomplish. And, um, then last week, um, this whole journey that I'm on right now with, um, with my mom, um, who, um, came to live with me today. Yay. Um, um, just the stuff that was happening last week. I mean, I was just a big boohoo ball of tears and, my normal reaction when I have a very hard, stressful, emotional day would be to drown my sorrows in queso and chips and tortilla with lots of butter and tequila. And um, um, I reached out to my mentors and then I, um, I didn't. I said, I'll just go to bed. I'm exhausted. 
and I need rest. That's why I'm reacting and I just need rest. And so I went to bed before I could get in trouble. And I was proud of myself that I, I stuck with my goal. So here's, here's what I want you guys to do as we come into this next week and we're really rounding the last, you know, we have like three weeks. Yeah. Three weeks, these three weeks left in side of phase one, when you get into those moments, because you were made to do hard things. Like you were made, you were designed to do hard things. You were designed to overcome tough situations. And so as you get into these moments, just remind yourself, no, don't react. Don't allow yourself to react. Don't allow something, somebody, some food to get the best of you. Remember who you are. Remember what your goals are and make choices according to that. And if you find yourself in a situation and it's like, man, this is hard. Know that you're on the right road. Know that you're on the right path. Know that, no, because you know the path where it's not hard, the path that leads to a comfort zone, the path that leads to where we've been, the path that leads to overweight, not feeling our best, not looking our best, not aging backwards, which is what all of you are doing literally right now. That's where the path you're on leads. And on that path, there are going to be some challenges, but beyond those challenges where the change happens, it's where you become this new person. It's where you get this new body. It's where you develop the self-discipline. It's where you become the person that you were always meant to be, but it is going to be work. And when you get into those moments, when you think of situations where you've done hard things, where you've overcome, when you remind yourself that, hey, you've been here before, you had hard situations, and here's what you did last time. This is no different. You can overcome this situation too. When you get in those situations, becoming your biggest cheerleader, you've got this. You've been equipped. What would Carmen say? What would Carmen do? I love what Deborah said. She reached out to her mentors. She got the support she needed in the moment. And really just thinking three weeks left in phase one, finishing it with everything we've got. You know, it's always easy to start strong. Starting strong is easy, but it takes intentionality. It takes decision to finish strong. <laughs>